The Simple Craft Texture Pack is very good at doing one very simple thing, simplifying the Minecraft texture theme. But unlike Bare Bones, which is made to emulate the simplified textures used in the trailers for Minecraft, this kind of takes a different approach. Instead of using the vanilla aesthetic and just simplifying that, it takes those groundworks but takes a slightly different way going to simplify it and then adding a little bit more of a personal flair into the actual texture pack itself, giving it a slightly different look than the bare bones texture pack would is its in of itself. The Faithless Texture Pack is a very interesting texture pack. I've talked about it many different times over the past year and a bit, and basically its core premise is in order to have a fantasy texture pack that is also very useful for people who are vision impaired. Basically, most of the textures are pretty very different to each other, make them stand out a lot more in comparison to each other, especially for the people that are colorblind as well. It's just one of those nice looking texture packs that are very aesthetically pleasing and also has an, a different purpose towards it as well in order to make it so that colorblind people, people who have slightly worse of vision and other things on those lines can easily play the game because the majority of items have unique textures towards them to make them stand out from each other, if not additional icons and other little bits and pieces pieces in order to, well, make sure that they are very obviously different to a different item. Barely Default is a very interesting texture pack that is, well, barely default. A lot of the textures are very similar to typical vanilla, if not the same. Some of them are very minimalistic changes, like for example, a fair bit of the different cobblestone variants have got a slightly darker grey tone to them instead of the normal tones you would see. Chests have got a drastic change with having a slightly different texture than before. Some doors have different textures, and probably the most major change are the actual icons for effects and all that, as well as mobs receiving a major overhaul. One big one I noticed was, well, the end dragon seems to have a wildly different texture based upon the dragon head within and of itself. Overall, it's one of those ones where you want to have some slight changes, but not nothing really massive that massively changes how Minecraft looks overall. As it keeps the majority of things the same, it just slightly revamps certain bits and pieces, different fonts, and very minimal changes aside from overhauling a lot of the mob designs. Next, we have the Mythic Texture Pack. This is yet another medieval slash fantasy theme texture pack. It has a good mixture of theme from both of them. There's one very core cool word I will use to describe the colors of this texture pack is that a lot of things seem to have a bit of a maroney slash red tinge to it. I mean, even look at the wheat in this footage here. The wheat's got a bit of a weird red tinge to it. The dirt's a lot redder than normal. The wood's a lot more redder than normal. Like, there's a very heavy undertoning of red-ish tinging in a lot of the different textures in this world. Overall though, it's a very beautiful looking texture pack, though some of the mob designs do look a bit odd, especially the realistic cow. It's a bit of an interesting one there, but overall, as I said, it's a nice beautiful texture pack if you want something that drastically changes everything to give more of a medieval slash fantasy theme. It really is just a nice looking texture pack, but again, a cool way to describe it, it's a bit red. Next we have Polaratris, I believe it's how it's said, I probably have said that wrong, but this is going to be the first more decisive, divisive texture pack of the day, as it's, well, everything is a lot brighter and square. Think about it as like the DV Disco texture packs from way, way back in the day, that are more square based, that really simplify the hell out of the texture, it's just a lot more brighter than what they probably were. It's an interesting texture pack, and it seems like there's a few textures a bit missing, for example, like the shulker boxes seem to be missing certain things as well, which is definitely uh, something maybe to keep in concern of, maybe not. It's really just like a very handful of textures that have probably just been overlooked at this point in time. Overall, just another beautiful looking texture pack, especially with how they've taken the square approach with a lot of different styles. Including all the things like the saw is no longer around. It's now a rectangle saw, which is interesting to say the least. The next texture pack for today is called Better Skeletons. Now, this one does take use of Optifine, and that's where we're going to start having a few more that do that in the latter half of this video. So, if you don't like using Optifine, I'll skip over the next few for you. But basically, what Better Skeletons does, it adds in a huge new variety of different skeletons that you can find spawned throughout your world. Not only will there be different variations of the skeleton itself, whether it be a typical skeleton, a villager skeleton, a piglin skeleton, or various other different animals in a skeleton form, but they'll also have different variations of their costumes. Some of them will be wearing cloaks, some of them will have a a bag for their arrows on their back. I completely a quiver, that's what it is, holy crap. 
but further on to that different costume, the skeleton itself will have different textures, colours and variations to it depending on what biome it is. In some biomes it will be completely normal with a leather jacket slash cloak, in others it will be more green cloaks with more mossiness going along the skeletons, or if the skeleton spawns in the nether, they will pretty much be the same colour as a wither skeleton. Speaking of which, they also have their own set of variations. Again, following the same baseline skeletons, three block tall normal withered box skeleton, a villager skeleton, as well as a piglin skeleton, but these wither skeletons will now be wearing silver crowns, as well as nice little looking little shoulder pads, as well as having some form of cape, with the additional detailing of gold. Some of them will have little splotches of gold amongst their textures. There will be even ones that are just entirely gold themselves instead of the typical wither colour. Overall, just adding a whole lot new different variety to the game when it comes to just your skeletons itself. Like, it's just going to make it so much more unique for you, you know? Next, we have Pet Dragons, which is yet another Optifine base texture pack, but don't worry. This is actually quite interesting. Because instead of using a mod to add in dragons to the game, this texture pack, and yes, this is simply a texture pack that takes advantage of Optifine to change a wolf into a dragon texture. That rather than changing the colour of the collar with dye, you change the colour of the actual dragon itself with the use of dyes. And not only that, whenever you walk around with this dragon, he's going to be floating around. He kind of still has, like, walks like a wolf because, you know, it's literally just a texture on top of the wolf. But whenever he goes to attack any form of mob, he'll be spitting fire. Not actually, it's again just another texture effect. But ultimately, it's a really, really cool texture pack that's been really well done. And all it does is just replace the texture of a mob with a different texture. What? Next, we have Pastillo. Now, this texture pack, I'm not quite sure how to describe the aesthetics and styles that this is quite going after. It kind of feels like it's going for the highly detailedness of a realism texture pack, but it's not quite going all the way in that direction. It's trying to keep itself held back a little bit. This is a bit of an incomplete texture pack as there's a lot of textures that have not been done as of yet, but that's been worked on bit by bit. And overall, I think so far off of its current design, it's a really nice designed texture pack so far. Again, I, I'm not quite sure if I've got the right words to describe how to actually, well, describe the texture pack in of itself, but you can see it on screen. You can get the aesthetics that it's going for. Next, we have the Caribara texture pack. Now, this is a very simple texture pack that aims to only do one thing, replace the pig model and textures all related to it with the Caribara. I mean, you can see it on screen, it, there's really not too much to it. It replaces some of the sounds, it changes the entire texture. It's interesting to say the least, and that's all I can really say. <laughs> And next we have Pastel Craft, which is going to be yet another decisive texture pack in today's video, mainly because it's very bright, very over the top, and very aesthetically pleasing if you really like colours. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's a nice little texture pack. It's not over the top as the Toon cartoon-esque texture pack was in the last video, but it's still very out there as a texture pack, as it relies a lot on very bright colours, very over the top saturation, as well as some very different texture changes that you may or may not be too fond of. Again, it's a pretty decent texture pack overall, and so are the rest of the ones from this list, so you better subscribe so you can see the next list when it comes out next week. Bye-bye!